Number one reason why you will never get jacked, okay? Let's face it, most people do not achieve their fitness goals. Never mind get to the point of being jacked. Why is that? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you the number one reason why people don't get jacked so that you can avoid it and so that you don't make this mistake so that you can become the strongest, most jacked version of yourself. Okay, so what is the biggest reason why people don't get jacked? It's not what you think it is and what a lot of people think it is, is they believe that everyone else is on steroids and PEDs and everyone else is a fake natty and they're not and because they're not taking anything and because they're natural that is why they're out of shape and they don't have the physique that they want. Now I'm not denying that PEDs work. I'm not denying that there's people online who take PEDs and don't talk about it or lie about it, okay? That is a fact but having that mindset and believing that everyone else is on PEDs and you're not and that's the reason why you'd not make it you don't have the physique that you want and you're not making gains takes the power away from you it's essentially a victim mindset it's the same as blaming your genetics and believing that you have bad genetics and that is why you don't have the physique that you want because they are all factors which are outside of your control so even if there is an element of truth to those beliefs it's not helpful to focus on those things because it takes the power away from you so what are the things that we can control what is within our sort of sphere of influence what can we control to make sure uh, you know we're getting as jacked as humanly possible well i believe the number one reason why people don't get jacked is simply because they don't train hard enough, okay? People, like, go in the, next time you go in the gym, okay, have a look around, have a look at everyone training in the gym and ask yourself, just observe, and be, be honest, think to yourself, how many of these people are giving 80% effort, 90% effort? How many of these people are giving 100% effort? When I go into the gym, I just see people going through the motions, okay? Most people are just going to the gym because it's a good idea, because they know it's good to go to the gym and they like the idea of going to the gym and they wanna be able to take a selfie in the mirror and they wanna be able to say to everyone, I go to the gym and they wanna put the little cute gym outfit on, but <laughs> most people are not going there for a serious workout, okay? And I believe that's the reason why people are not getting the results that they want, okay? So, now that you know that you need to train hard, how do you actually do that? Because, you know, it's very easy in practice, but it's much harder in theory. No, that's the wrong way around. It's much, it's easy in theory, but harder in practice, okay? So, first thing to know is how hard should should you actually be training? So, it's a, you know, fair question, especially if you've, not been training much at the moment, how hard should you train? Well, I'm gonna give you some general guidelines which will work for most people if you want to build muscle, if we wanna focus on hypertrophy. So what I like to do is every single set should be somewhere between eight to 15, okay? That's the range that I like to work within. For me personally, I found that a rep range of like 12 to 15 works better. Some people are on the lower end of the spectrum, but if you're prioritizing hypertrophy, you wanna be between, every single set should be between eight to 15 reps, okay? That's the first thing. How many sets should you do? Well, for each exercise, I like to do anywhere from two so maximum five sets per exercise. And um, for each muscle group, I'll probably do, you know, three to five exercises per training session. My training sessions are never longer than an hour. I always like to have at least one or two days rest days per week. So that makes sure I'm not overtraining. Okay, so now you have a general idea of how much of volume you should be doing. Now we can think about the intensity and how hard you should be pushing the weight. And the general rule of thumb 
or how I like to gauge this is something called reps in reserve, okay? So what reps in reserves is, is when you do a set, at the end of the set, how many more reps could you have done if you were gonna go all the way to failure, okay? So if I do a set of 10, but I probably could have got 12 without breaking form, then that is a reps in reserve of two, okay? So what I like to go off is, let's say for example, I'm doing three sets on an exercise. My first set, I would like to be, have two reps in reserve. My second set, one rep in reserve, and my final set, zero. Like on my final set, what I like to do is go to the point of failure and then I might do some partial reps or some half reps or I might be breaking form slightly but I'm just pushing that little bit past beyond failure but without the point of where I'm risking injury, okay? So I'm training to failure but typically only on the last set but every single set is, is very much within failure, okay? And that's what I found works well for me, it works well for the rest of my clients as well. But you've got to be honest with yourself because a lot of people will do a set and they'll say, oh yeah, you know, that was a reps in reserve of two and really they could have got 10 more, okay? So it's very easy to kind of trick yourself. Like your mind almost plays tricks on you and will tell yourself like, oh yeah, you, you were close to failure. You did enough that set. You can, you can relax. You don't, maybe you don't need to do another set. You've got to kill those uh, negative beliefs. And this is why it's very easy in theory to train hard, but it's much harder in practice because when you get in the gym and when you start pushing yourself, now, you need to become a little bit of a savage. You know, you need a little bit of mind control to push through and actually kill those negative thoughts. And I've got a example of this, right? So I started doing high rocks a three, like about three months ago, okay? And it's an intermediate to advanced class, okay? So I went there, never done high rocks before, not really done much cardio, and I was easily one of the worst people in the class, okay? And after like three months, I'm now one of the best people in the class. How is that? How have I gone from being one of the worst to one of the best in such a short period of time? And the reason is because every time I go and do a high rocks class, I'm pushing myself more than everyone else. So I'm gonna get more gains out of that training session. Some people go there, they don't even push themselves. They're not even trying that hard. They're just going for a light workout and to move their body. And it, you know, that is fine if that's what you want to do. But if you're, if you're telling yourself that you want to get jacked, then you're going to have to put in the effort. You know, like your goals need to match your effort. And typically a lot of people have really high goals and expectations of themselves, but their effort doesn't match. Okay. So, just think about, you know, what physique are you after? What goals are you after? And is your effort, honestly, is your effort right now high enough for you to be able to reach those goals? Because if it's not, then you're guaranteed to fail. You will never, ever, ever reach your goals. And I believe that is why most people, they're just in the gym, they're just going through the motions, they don't see the results that they expect and they end up quitting, all right? And I don't want that to happen to you, so you've just gotta become a little bit of a savage, you've just gotta kill those negative thoughts when you're in the gym, you know what to do, you know the rep range now, you know how hard you need to work, the only thing left to do is for you to go there every single day and execute, okay? And you do this for one year, two year, three year, four year, and you will eventually become an absolute savage and this will permeate through the rest of your life, okay? Now, I've made previous videos on talking about how getting jacked will change your life. I don't believe that you just, you have muscles and suddenly you cast a spell on women and suddenly the whole universe conspires to work in your favor. It doesn't work like that. How getting jacked changes your life is because you have to learn how to show up at the gym three to five times a week, how to give close to 100% effort every single week, even on the days that you don't feel like it. And you've got to do that for years on end. Because if you learn how to do that 
for the gym, then you can learn how to do that for your business. You can learn how to do that to get better at relationships or whatever it is that you care about. You learn how to push yourself in the gym and then you learn how to push yourself in the rest of your life. All right, guys, so that is the number one reason why people don't get jacked, why they don't hit their goals is simply because they're not training hard enough. So go out there, be an absolute savage, go hit those goals, go get as jacked as possible, and I'll see you in the next one.